Hey friend, welcome back to Fig and Farm at Home. I am so glad you're here. This week we are talking all about flat surface styling. What is that? Basically it's this. You open up a magazine, a home design magazine, you turn on any TV show that is a home remodel, home design TV show, and you see all of the really pretty styled mantles, coffee tables, bookshelves. You see them all. There is a science for styling rather than merchandising, and there is a secret for making it come together as beautifully as the pictures you see or the TV shows you look at. That's what we're talking about today. So you are going to want to grab your notebook, a pen, and maybe park the car (laughs) because you're going to want to take some notes so that you can implement what it is I'm teaching you today onto your mantle or your coffee table or your bookshelf. Wherever it is, whatever flat surface you're going to be styling, you're going to want to know the secrets. So stick around and enjoy today's show. We grew up with the phrase, home is where the heart is, but our culture has shifted and now the message is, home should be Pinterest perfect. I'm calling BS on that message. Home, it's not about the stuff, it's about the story. And whether you know it or not, your home is a reflection of you and is already saying something. So what is it that you want it to say? Hey, I'm Danny, a former first grade teacher turned home decorator. Going from a dual income to a single income so I could stay home with my babies meant budget, like ramen eating, Goodwill shopping budget, and I learned a few things along the way, like how to bring big style to your home without breaking the bank, and I'm sharing it all with you. Tips, tricks, decor, and design advice so you can learn to tell your story with your style where you can start living free from the Pinterest perfect trap and start living a life of intention. Welcome to Fig and Farm at Home, where we design happy living and where it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. Before we dive into teaching you all the secrets for styling your flat surfaces, I want to tell you another secret. Do you remember when you were growing up, maybe maybe you're too young to remember this. Maybe you don't even know this because you grew up in the age of Disney+. Plus. But some of us who did not have instant access to all of the cool Disney Plus <laughs> movies, some of us had to wait for the Disney movies to be released. They were tucked so tightly away into a thing called the vault that we had to wait not days, not weeks, not months. We had to wait years for the vault to be open and the video, the movie to be released. I remember waiting for, I think it was Aladdin and the Little Mermaid to come out of the vault so that I could buy it. And I didn't buy it in the DVD form and I definitely didn't buy it in the Blu-ray. For all of you young pups listening, I bought it in a VHS. <laughs> I don't even know what VHS stands for, but I do know that those are big clunky machines and my kids have no idea what in the world those big tapes are for. I don't have those tapes anymore, <laughs> but I do remember the agony of waiting for the vault to open so I could have access to watch the video and the movie that I loved so much. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this because Fig and Farm at Home has a vault. Do you know that? We do. We have a vault where all of the classes I've ever taught are stored. And those classes that I've taught over the course of the years have been put together in this one great big package called Home Design 101. Some of you have taken Home Design 101 and wow, are we design besties. We have walked from beginning to end in the home design process. Some of you are maybe waiting for that course to be open again, but others of you are thinking, I would like to learn, but I don't necessarily want the big course. Well, friends, the vault is opening May 19th through May 26th, and the vault has smaller classes that you might be interested in. Classes that are more bite-sized than the Home Design 101 10-week course, which, by the way, is getting a facelift. You'll hear more about that at the end of the summer. How do you access the vault? You access it by being a design bestie. Design besties get my weekly newsletter with tips and tricks that I sometimes don't share here. They get early access to courses when they are open and special deals when they are given. Design besties will also have exclusive access to the vault. So are we design besties yet? If you already receive my weekly newsletters, fantastic. You are already signed up and you will have access on May 19th to the vault. If you don't get my newsletters yet, but maybe you think you've signed up, check your spam. They come out every Friday. And if you would like to be a design bestie, 
send me an email at hello at figandfarmathome.com and tell me that you would like to be added to the newsletter. You would like to be a design bestie and have access to all the perks. All right, friends, grab your notebook, grab your pen, and let's dive in to how we can style flat surfaces. Styling of flat surfaces is a lot easier than you might think, but I think sometimes we make it more complicated. And before we dive into this simple formula that I've created, I do want to have you understand the difference between styling and merchandising. When you think about merchandising, I want you to think about a store. Now I can walk into 10 different stores and I can think, ooh, that is really great merchandising. And that is really, wow, they need some help. (laughs) The goal of merchandising is to sell things. And we've all probably seen or been into stores where there are very minimal items. Kate Spade immediately comes to mind, where you walk in and there is more neutral negative space than there are products to buy. And generally, those products are really expensive. But then you walk into stores where it is so cram-packed and there's very little negative space. Now, we're not really going to talk about merchandising because that is not the goal. The goal for you is to not merchandise your home, but some of us do. If you think about the pictures we see and are drawn to in the fall time, especially those images come to mind on Pinterest where we see mantles that are just oozing and overflowing with stuff and more stuff and more stuff. And there's not any blank space. And maybe we even see some of that stuff spilling onto the hearth. That looks like merchandising. And as we style our homes and as we style our flat surfaces, I want to encourage you to move more towards intentional styling and less merchandising because you're not selling those things. (laughs) And in this case, more is not always better. But styling has a different goal. The goal of styling is to dress your room, to make it look good, to make it feel good. If you think about going on a date and you think about being really mindful of the clothing you pick and the makeup you do and you leave your hair. Maybe your hair is a hot mess. Maybe you have wet hair, you're just out of the shower, but everything else looks fantastic, but you didn't have a chance to style your hair. You probably wouldn't do that for a really nice date, right? You would probably take the time and be intentional about doing the best you can. Of course, sometimes we have bad hair days, but other times you would make the best effort you would at least walk out with your hair dried, (laughs) maybe curled, maybe flat ironed, maybe put up or left down. Whatever it is, it is intentional. And styling is intentional dressing of the room to make it look beautiful while feeling livable. It is not either or. And so that is what we're trying to do with flat surface styling. So when we think about flat surfaces in our home, I want you to imagine these pieces. I want you to imagine mantles, open shelving, entryway tables, coffee tables, bookshelves, credenzas, hutches. I want you to imagine anything that is a flat, plain surface. Now you can probably envision some of the things that go onto these, maybe trays or books or lamps or plants or candles. But sometimes just placing the item onto the flat surface doesn't have the intentionality behind it to make it look and feel beautiful or dressed, if we're using that term. It sometimes lacks that teeny tiny little bit of nuance in order to make it set apart from having bought it at the store or make it set apart in a way that looks inviting in a way that looks intentional. I don't want to use the word in the way that looks like on Pinterest because that is never the goal here at Fig and Farm. We don't want to compare ourselves or our homes to what we see in these pictures. Remember, these pictures are highly, highly styled and items are manipulated. Items are moved here and there, but, but the goal can be the same. So if you know that you are constantly drawn to the images on Pinterest or in, in magazines where They just look pretty. That is styling. And that is the goal of today's conversation. To teach you how to do it well so that you don't stop and look and think, why does this not look right? Why does this constantly look funky or wonky or weird? Why does this not look the way I want it to? 
not the exact replica of the pictures we see on Pinterest, but the way that you want it to. Because a lot of times when I hear from people like you, the comment is, I don't even know how to do it, so I don't even try. Or I really like the idea of it, but I have no clue where to start. Or I don't know. (laughs) Their hands are just in the air. So here we go. The things I want you to think about are these things. The very first thing to do is to remove all of the stuff on top of the flat surface that you are intentionally styling. Now, if that flat surface is an entryway table, it's not going to be a whole lot of work to rebuild. And by rebuilding, I mean putting it together nicely and aesthetically pleasing. If it is a wall of bookshelves, woo, that can be a little tricky. And that I go into in depth in my bookshelf styling guide, which is my flat surface styling guide in the vault. I go into that completely and in depth. But what I want you to think about is removing all of the stuff and giving it a deep clean, but then how you intentionally place items back on there. So we're going to talk about the system I developed called ladder. And I'm, I'm pronouncing it in the way that you might envision a ladder like you would climb to higher heights, right? But it's not spelled that way. So get out your notebook, get out your pen, and I want you to write these things down in a vertical line. L D H T R. Those things, when I put them together, say ladder. Now, I'm going back to my first grade teaching roots here because I know that somewhere along the line, one of my first graders probably spelled ladder this way. These are the sounds they hear. <laughs> and that's where I'm getting that. Okay, so no need to send me an email saying, but that's not how you spell ladder. Yeah, I know. Okay, here we go. L is for layers. Now, layers and and the D for depth are best friends. They go hand in hand. The more layers you have, the more depth you create in your space. The more visual appreciation you can have for the nuance of design. When you add layers, you take what could be a 2D object or appearance and create the illusion of 3D. Of course, we all know that they are 3D objects. We are not styling with just flat pieces of paper. But sometimes when you're looking at it straight on, it can look like that. And so we want to add layers which create depth so that you have the illusion of fullness. If you've been listening for a while, you know that I use the word nuance. This is where the nuance of design really takes shape. And what I mean by nuance, because I don't know that I've ever explained it, is it's a subtle variation or distinction. It is the thing that sets your home apart from the person next door or the person across the street. The nuance is the cherry on top, the frosting on the top. It is the it is the icing. It is the, if I could kiss my lips and say, Mwah, it is that. And that is what you want in order to create a home that has a little bit of elevation while completely representing your story with your personality. And flat surface styling is the thing that gets that personality infused into your home's design. It is the eye in the detail. That's what flat surface styling is. So here's an example of what I mean by layers. Without having anything to visually represent right now to show you, I want you to imagine. So if you are in a safe space, shut your eyes. If you're not, if you're driving, keep them open. (laughs) The drivers around you will thank you. But what I want you to think about are these subtle differences. Imagine a entryway table. Imagine a lamp that is sitting right there and on the entryway table there is maybe a couple pieces of art or maybe some picture frames. And I want you to think about maybe the picture frames are not the same size. One is bigger. Maybe one is like 12 by 20. So it's pretty long but not very tall. And then you have a little picture frame, maybe a 5 by 7. You can put these two things on your entryway table two ways. And a lot of times what I see is people putting them on side by side. And you can see there's maybe a height variation because we have the 12 height and the 7 height. But you put them side by side and they just look like items placed on top of a surface. But what happens if you tuck in the small picture right next to leaning on overlapping the big one? That is what I mean by layers and depth. And this can happen so subtly in the form of 
uh, where you place candles, where you place candle holders, where you place lights, where you place plants, where you place books. It is such a subtle little overlapping, but that overlapping matters. So what I want you to think here is moving away from a straight line. Going back to the first great illusion, oh my goodness, you would have thought that lining up to go anywhere, lunch, recess, PE, was the best thing in the history of things for these (laughs) six-year-olds. There is no wonder why all first grade teachers in the history of first grade teachers have a line order. They have a line leader, they have a door holder, and if they're smart, they have a caboose and maybe someone in the middle who is watching and and making sure the line is moving. They have this in place because the line is so incredibly important. We don't want to get out of line. But here, when you're flat surface styling, you do not want the line. (laughs) If you have a line leader, it looks like ladder. And ladder is keeping everything in its place, but it's making sure that there is movement within the line. So very opposite of the first grade line. Are you catching it? We're going to talk about what those other ones are in just a second because those make up the fluidity of the flat surface styling. You want to have variation and you want to have subtlety. We don't want to have so much stuff, and I'm now picturing this Pinterest image of pumpkins spilling on top of pumpkins with ferns coming out and plants coming out of the overcrowded mantle. We don't want that. That is not subtle. That is in-your-face merchandising, and we're moving into subtlety here. So depth is created when you have layer upon layer. An example of this that is still flat surface styling, but not necessarily in the way of like a tabletop, but in a wall. All walls are flat surfaces. And when you, when you hang curtains, this is one of the reasons why I think curtains are so incredibly important in a room, because you are layering, you're adding a layer and depth and depth texture and all kinds of wonderful things when you have that curtain sitting just over the edge of the edge of the window even if your window is framed you want to have a distinction between the way that that curtain lands on your wall but not necessarily the way that it stops right at the edge of the curtain you don't want that line to be represented there you want that teeny tiny little bit of overlap There's subtlety there that really elevates the look in your home. Moving on in our acronym to T, that is texture. And I gave a little bit of a hint away when we talk about the texture on the wall with the curtain, but texture, every piece of matter, every object that you bring into your home that you can touch has some sort of texture to it. A lot of times and most often, When we have a flat design, it is because the objects that we are looking at, that we can literally put our hands out and feel, those objects are flat. They are smooth. So bringing in texture, even in the appearance of, not necessarily that you have to touch it and it feels soft or spiky or rough or what have you, but even in the illusion of texture, that is going to add that teeny tiny little subtlety, that nuance that sets your design apart. So for example, when you are choosing candles, when you're choosing pots for your vases when or um, vases for your flowers or pots for your plants, when you are choosing books, think about the way that the texture is represented visually. And that visual appearance is going to add a nuance to your design that is not like anything you might see next door. Think about the way that that your texture is aligning in your space. What do you see and what can you say back to me if I were to ask you what kind of textures do you see? And you might be able to say things like velvet, rough, smooth, chenille. You might have literal descriptions that I could picture, like I can picture a velvet piece of cloth or a chenille piece of cloth. But what else? Is it chalky? Is it hobnail? Hobnail has its own textural appearance. Is it rough? Is it flat and smooth? Can you see the texture even in the cover of a book? When we have things that appear texturally very plain and bland and smooth, your design is going to fall flat. So 
increasing the amount of texture that you can see and feel is a very, very good thing and will add that subtlety that you want for your home's design. The next thing to keep in mind for styling your flat surface with intentionality is to vary the height. Just like we don't want the illusion of a 2D surface, we don't want the illusion of everything in this little vignette, and the vignette I'm thinking is the one item, the coffee table, the mantle, the entryway table. We don't want all of the items to have the same height. So if I'm back to my entryway example, and I have a table lamp that we'll say is 15 inches, and then I have a plant that we'll say is 15 inches, and maybe a piece of art that we'll say is 15 inches, that is going to lack subtlety In fact, it's going to be blaringly obvious that something is wrong here. And the thing that is wrong is that there's no height variation. Maybe we have the texture right. Maybe we've even layered it. But if there's no variation in the height, if there's no fluidity, then you're lacking a key element in creating a home that looks styled intentionally. And this is something easy to do. Maybe you just take out one of those pieces of art and you put in something a little smaller so you can overlap it in front. Maybe you elevate the height of the lamp so that it sits a little higher by bringing in some books. Oh, and by the way, your books have a little bit of a linen texture to it that is different than the hobnail that is on your lamp. Do you see where I'm going here? We've already just added now layers and depth and texture. We've already just added all of those things just by taking apart that one flat line of the 15 inch height. When you add different heights to your flat surfaces, you want to think about having a subtle landscape. I'm picturing now, and I want you to picture too, maybe the horizon of a Midwest landscape. And if you've ever been to the Midwest, you can see flowing and rolling hills. What you don't see are sharp, jagged lines of mountains. You don't see the Tetons. You don't see the Rockies. You don't see anything that just kind of sticks out of the land the flat land surface, like you would maybe here where I live in the Pacific Northwest. It's all very rolling. It's all very uh, movement oriented. And that is the same that we want to think about in our flat surface styling. We don't want jagged edges like mountains might represent. We want a rolling line. We want it to be where there's height variation, but it's a little bit more soft. It's not as harsh lined as maybe the mountain would appear. And the last one, if you hear nothing else from today's talk, I want you to think about repetition. Now, if you've heard me before, I will stand by this until I am blue in the face. (laughs) Repetition is the key of great design. Now, repetition, there's a very fine line between repetition and too much of a good thing. And sometimes when we are merchandising our home rather than styling our home, we've crossed that boundary and crossed that line into too much of a good thing. Repetition is so incredibly important. It is the glue that makes your home look and feel cohesive. It is the element that makes it look and feel put together. If you have all of the items that are on your flat surface, whatever you're styling, if you have those items and the design elements of those items represented somewhere else in your space, somewhere else within your sight line, not necessarily on that flat surface, you have the makings of intentional styling. Now, if we put all of the repetition in one space, what we end up with is the fall time overstuffed merchandise mantle. That's what we end up with. But we don't want that. Going back to my entryway table, if I have the lamp that has the hobnail and I have the linen-like book underneath it, and then I have maybe a really fun textural frame for my artwork, and then I have the plant, and the plant is maybe a maiden hair fern that is kind of wispy and fun. If I have all of those things represented, now looking elsewhere in my room, do I have hobnail or polka dot, which essentially is hobnail, do I have that somewhere else in the room? Yep. Oh, I see it right over there in the vase that is sitting on the hutch. Oh, the linen. Do I have linen represented somewhere else in the room or the color of the linen somewhere else within that sight line? Yep. There it is sitting on the bookshelf. Maybe it is the color that is sitting in the picture frame over there on the bookshelf. You want to have what appears to be 
like a spider web. If I'm looking at every single item on my flat surface, I'm able to take that as the starting point and I'm able to take that design element, whatever it is, metal, wood, color, texture, I'm able to take that and I'm able to draw a line, my little spider web to another piece somewhere else within that sight line. Not behind a closed door, but within the sight line. And then from that point, I'm able to take it and I'm able to take my little spider web and draw a line to another piece, connecting all of those pieces together. And I want to have at least three. If I have more, great, but sometimes more can be overkill. So you want to have that subtle representation, not the overkill and definitely not the merchandising. Friends, I can go on and on and on about this. I hope that you are able to digest this information. I hope that you're able to apply the ladder formula. I hope that you're able to play with your coffee table, play with your credenza, play with your mantle, play with your bookshelves, play with whatever flat surface you're wanting to play with using the system. And if you do, would you do me the favor of taking a picture of the before and the after and sending it to me? You can send it to me privately. I'll take a peek in my email at hello at figandfarmathome.com or be brave and post it in the Facebook group where we are a community of mamas who are encouraging each other daily. We're answering each other's questions. We are getting feedback even on the flat surface styling. Friends, we are here to support you in your journey of creating a home that represents you, that tells your story, that tells it well, and tells it beautifully. And if you are interested in learning a little bit more, if this just scratched the surface for you and you want to have access to my bookshelf styling guide, which really is not aptly named. In fact, I might need to rename that pretty soon, but it is flat surface styling. Because if you know how to style a bookshelf, you know how to style flat surfaces. But I talk about it all in my bookshelf styling guide which is currently in the vault, but it is opening on May 19th. If you want access to that, I encourage you to hop on over to my email, hello at figandfarmathome.com, so that you have access to it when it opens. Now keep in mind that all of these are teeny tiny little courses within the ginormous big course, Home Design 101. Prices are reflective of that, so you are not spending a whole lot. In fact, maybe two lattes worth. (laughs) All right, friends. I hope that you are inspired, delighted, and encouraged by today's episode. If you are, share it with a friend. That is the best compliment you could give me. Until next time, I will see you soon. Hey, real quick before you go. If you learned something new or found value in today's podcast, would you head over to iTunes to Fig and Farm at Home and leave a review and subscribe to the show? That would be awesome. And if you'd like to connect with my community of mamas who are learning to be intentional storytellers within their own homes, join us at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. There's always more room at the table. See you soon.